Good morning, friends. Happy New Year, continually. And um, it's going to be a wonderful day. That is my declaration over your life and over this new year. Let it be filled with the goodness of God and mercy of God. As David said, the mercy and goodness of God follow me all the days of my life. That's wonderful if <laughs> goodness follows you. Wherever you go, good things happen. Good things happen to you. Good things happen through you to others. It is a blessing to be a good experience in somebody's life. Recently, I had a <clears throat> I had a <clears throat> experience with a with a car. <clears throat> we purchased a car for our church, and this ended up being a little faulty with the gearbox. But the owner, the previous owner, was so gracious. He uh, had the car fixed. Um, part of the gearbox was fixed. He paid for it. We still kept the car. And after that, the car still had slight problems. So we said, uh, perhaps it's better for you to buy it back and finalize this, you know, fixing, fixing the car, and then you do whatever you need to do with it. And he agreed. I went up to Tallinn. Throughout this whole thing, he was gracious. He was, you know, just a gentleman something very rare nowadays you don't see that in business world at all this trustworthiness this honesty this uh, this this goodwill i was very impressed but this morning friends i would like to share with you with you my english friends here in estonia as well as all all, the, all around the world of course today video and and, and this high technology, this means uh, of, of, of communication goes around the world easily. I want to share with you that the most secure and safe place upon this earth is not necessarily a, a deep cellar, you know, or basement of a high-rise building and, or even a bunker you know with the concrete and all the batteries loaded up there in the storage and you know some canned food and stuff like that well the safest place on upon this earth is being in the will of god being in the will of god so no wonder jesus asked us to pray that your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. So that should be part of our prayer. God, lead me into your will today. Of course, I already know I gotta go to work. I already know that I need to look after my family and, you know, my kids and things like that. I, this is not something you need to pray about it. <laughs> I mean, should I do it or not? You already know you need to do it. But as far as those small little nudges of the Holy Spirit within our heart about certain steps, certain things, call up this guy. You know, he needs he needs a word of confirmation. He needs an encouragement today. Give to this person this book. You know, he uh, or she is. Uh, you know, in, in despair and uh, confused, and that would help that person to get through that. Different things like that. Give, give that person a little money. You know, pray for him today. And uh, all of those things are walking in the will of God. Jesus said that not everyone that tells me the Lord Lord <laughs> will not go into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who doeth or does the will of God 
is the one that enters the kingdom of God. Apostle Paul prays or actually speaks about in the book of Romans that he is praying about coming to, to the church of Rome. And he says, I want to come in the will of God, which means he really wanted to do it. I mean, it was upon his heart. He would have started the journey right away. But he, in other words, said, I want to do it in the perfect will of God. I, 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 I perceive it's not right now the perfect timing. I already know I need to come. I do know that. So I got to just wait for this perfect time slot of will of God. And when we think of discerning the will of God, it may be in our minds that this is a you know, very difficult thing and only reserved for great saints who have come to, uh, come to this place of really, you know, hearing God well and doing the will of God. First of all, the will of God is revealed in His Word, in the Bible. As you read, you read, um, you know, the values God has. You read about His principles, the principles of the Kingdom of God. My spiritual father, Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole, always said that everything God does is according to a principle uh, that is in His Kingdom and according to a pattern which is based on a principle. That's exactly how it said it. So, you know, when you do study God's Word, you find His will. You know, it says walk in love, be patient. <laughs> so, do good to others, especially to, to the household of faith. So, you don't need to receive a special revelation to do that. Perhaps special revelation is needed or guidance to who? Because, you know, let's say there are two billion born again believers upon this earth. Well, you cannot do good to all of them. You know, it's just that too many. But there is one, there is two, maybe there is ten you call to, you know, help out. So God's will is revealed in his word. We read in the book of Acts that um, Apostle Paul was trying to enter into certain areas of Asia Minor, but he says that Holy Spirit inhibited us. Uh, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow us to go, which means most probably that there were not like physical obstacles, some great walls and he couldn't climb over. No, it was just in his heart, in his spirit, he felt, Apostle Paul felt that there was an obstacle. There was something not feeling right about going at that time. And that's the way also Holy Spirit leads us, which is also part of uh, walking in the will of God. When we are led by the Holy Spirit, we are uh, led into the will of God. And when we do obey, then we fulfill the will of God. Now, whenever Holy Spirit leads you, He always leads you according to the principles of God, which are written and stated and revealed in His Word, which is the Bible, of course. So, everything has to comply with the Word of God. Somebody may say, well, God's Spirit led me this morning to this church. Well, next Sunday, I felt like going to this other church. Next Sunday, I felt like I was supposed to stay at home altogether. Next Sunday, again, some something strange. Well, if you read the Bible, which says, don't uh, forbid the gatherings of your own church, you know, then you already know, I'm called to be part of this church. Sometimes I get some issues with people and I get maybe even offended or, you know, somebody didn't do this or do th didn't do that and I felt like I was, you know, overlooked. Still, I belong to this church. I'm sure you have some conflicts in your family periodically. Doesn't mean that you say, I'm going to get my 
salt new family i'm gonna go this morning to this other family you know it's not like you're coming home and you say to your wife as a man you know that uh, i bring uh, salary my wages to this house uh, except the holy spirit would lead me to you know take the <laughs> income to another you know next house or you know to another lady i mean that doesn't work because the principles and values are already set you don't need to pray about those things you need to just fulfill the principles that are out there in the book of romans 12 chapter verse 2 says that um, that you would study what is the perfect pleasing um, acceptable will of god so it is on our power to investigate to find out again how by reading god's word so when then a uh, situation happens in your life in your daily doings things happen you understand oh this goes together with this principles principle of god's word so i can let myself be guided through these guidelines in the daily life situations well there are some particular situations which of course need special addressing like uh, you know you know that divorce is not god's best you know but then sometimes people do end up in divorces and after even much counseling and uh, trying to save the relationship it just doesn't work most often it's because it already built on wrong basis and uh, i'm not gonna just uh, elaborate on it too long but just saying that then of course you submit this thing to your spiritual covering and your pastor and have them come in and help you out with discerning you know how to go about it and things like that so uh, principles guide us but then there are sometimes also other principles that cover these particular situations and uh, when we read from the book of corinthians paul says i'm the apostle according to the will of god which tells us that um, paul knew exactly what he was called to be and that's one area where we need to make sure what's the will of god for our lives let's say marriage is another thing who i need to marry uh, your friends you know those are very key factors making sure that those people i hang out with are god's people in my life and god sent people and that this is according to the will of god the place i live the place i go to church now any place or anything you do thinking that you are doing it in the will of god doesn't necessarily mean that things go always smoothly i mean jesus said to his disciples to go to the other side of the lake but then storm arose so the fact that you are uh, put together with somebody in in marriage uh, the, uh, in, in the will of god doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship just goes ideally we have no crossword <laughs> we just we just perfect match you can be perfect match but still have struggles and uh, matching <laughs> is a is a changing process so paul had a lot of challenges in his life didn't mean that he wasn't in the will of god as a matter of fact as he entered into a city the holy spirit witnessed to him saying you will face a lot of struggles they're gonna beat you up and they're gonna put you in bondage so when that happened paul said yeah i know this is the will of god i'm here to preach and he was just happy happy many many scriptures cover 
different areas of will of God. Uh, like you read 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 3, avoid fornication because that is the will of God. So you know that uh, keeping away, keeping yourself sexually pure, now fornication, adultery, all these things, this is will of God. You don't need to pray about it. Um, also in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, be thankful in every situation because that's the will of God. Again, you are called to be thankful. So whatever happens, if I thank God, that's the will of God. That's a good thing to do. Hebrews 10.36 says that you need patience because you need the patience to do the will of God. Yeah, well, you say, if that's the will of God, I thought things would go smoothly. Things would go automatically. They don't, even in the will of God sometimes. So don't pay attention to outward circumstances and decide on it either. Are you in the will of God or not? Because things can be very rough outside. Look into the inner peace in your heart and pay attention if those things are according to the patterns and principles of God. You know, am I walking in love? Am I in peace right now? Do I have the joy of the Lord? Uh, is everything right in my life? Have I, you know, made sure that I am not in, 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 in fight with anybody? If I leave this congregation, is that because I have personal, uh, I'm insulted, I'm offended personally, and now, because of that emotion, I'm leaving, but may not be the will of God to do so. So you got to just analyze those things. First Peter 2.15, doing good is the will of God. So whenever you can do good, that's the will of God. You don't need to pray about it, you know. You already have guidances, guidances here. Sometimes, you know, going against our lust is just... Uh, the opposite way is the will of God. My lust would guide me this direction, but then I know that I feel this is something my benefit. I, you know, like I would, I would want to satisfy my own desires. Well, <laughs> perhaps the other direction is correct altogether. And sometimes we suffer in the will of God. First Peter four nineteen. You know going through some tough times, losing things. Well, you're in the will of God. Well, that's what happened to Joseph. He was in the will of God. He did say that. He stated that later to his brothers, 20 years later, but he went through some heartbreak, betrayal. You know, he was rejected. Nobody knows what he went through mentally, emotionally all these years. He must have. But he was in the will of God. He didn't give up. So don't you give up when you go through periodic, you know, low seasons. Again, some are, some, some particular issues need to be discussed with your spiritual covering and uh, decisions to be made. But uh, again, don't just pay attention to outward circumstances and deciding on the will of God on, on the basis of those. And 1 John 2, 17 says, who does the will of God last forever. So people, I want to just encourage you at the beginning, at the outset of this new year of 2023, to seek the face of God and to pray and to make sure that we are walking in the safest place upon this earth, which is the will of God. Making sure what the will of God is, praying about it, and seeing what God can do with this year as we put an extra effort into walking in His will.